Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here at Muddy Thumper. So I'm going to take you guys along. We're going to call this a build series. Um, this is my 1984 Argo. She is an eight-wheeler. She's the first Argo I bought. But um, uh, if you recall in a recent video, I basically have a bunch of stuff to do with this machine. So if you like working on things or you like watching people work on things, I'm going to take you guys along on a journey. I am recently going through um, some stressful events. I lost my best friend, my dog, of 13 years. He's been my loyal companion, and um, he died recently. So I'm going to be building this machine, accessorizing it, all this stuff, just kind of um, as a form of uh, getting back on track and trying to get on through this. But I figured I'll take you guys along. Um, a couple things here that I'm planning on doing with this machine. Uh, she is a floater. I got mud tires on her currently. Might upgrade in the future to uh, amphibious if I can get them cheap enough. They're a 22 inch tire. But some things that this machine is getting is this is getting fixed up. She's going to get a nice exhaust. This right here is missing a winch. As you can see, there's no winch plate and nothing like that. I'm going to be making a homemade bumper. All that good stuff. I'm going to be separating the tub. I want to make a quick drain for the transmission, a drain line for the engine for doing oil quick and easy oil changes in the future. She has a good blower fan for cooling. I'm going to be trying to add some LED lights. You can see it's missing a windshield. Well, we got a windshield over there on the floor. <laughs> in the very back of the garage, I have a canopy that's over there, so she's going to get enclosed. Um, the seat is getting redone. The 84, it's really kind of like, it doesn't have any nice structure or nothing. It doesn't flip up or nothing like that. And you can see with this with this pad here, like down in front, it kind of reduces your leg room. So I'm going to be upgrading the seating position on this. Um, on the back, I'm probably going to be having a mountable winch that will come back here. And I'm going to be trying to make up an outboard motor. Might be some other stuff I'm forgetting. I'm going to try to structure up the tub, make her nice and tight. And uh, do axe mounts, uh, spare wheel mount, stuff like that. So you can see I have a lot of projects going on. So this is going to be the introduction, or this is going to be part one. We're going to take the tub off, we're going to separate her. Also a couple things, we're going to be painting up the rims. You can see like that rim looks new. This one looks kind of dirty and rusty. That one looks like it needs a paint. So that's getting done up. But yeah, it might be things I'm forgetting, guys. However, we will tackle it all together on this journey. I'm going to be calling this one is going to be my bag master. Because if you buy like a high-end Argo, you can buy the hunt master. If you're cheap and a mechanic like me, well, we're going to build something just as capable. And we're going to call her the bag master. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video series. If you're new here, feel free to drop a thumbs up and a subscribe. I've... Um, I'll take you guys along. Any questions along the way, uh, I'll just drop it down below. I'll reach out to you guys or I'll respond. I'm pretty good with it. Um, I tried to move this Argo out of the garage maybe like a week ago, a couple days ago, and she won't start. So we're going to be doing the fuel pump as well because I'm pretty sure the fuel pump is kaput. <laughs> and maybe clean the car. But basically, she's getting overhauled. Um, this, uh, I'm not sure if I showed you guys before, this is the father-in-law's Argo. She's a six-wheeler, 650 Frontier. I know you can kind of see a void right here, like this little bit of space. Well, I have another one of these coming. <laughs> She's going to be another six-wheeler. I bought it up, bought it last week. She's getting fully loaded. So, it's going to be probably two of these sitting here in the future. <laughs> so, <laughs> you'll see it in a future video, basically. In a couple, a couple days' time, I'll have her. Anyways, guys, let's, uh, let's crack on. Just want to give you a rundown of what you can expect on this build series, the Bogmaster. A um, couple other things as well. You can see it has one sticker on this side. I got some plates over there that's got like Argo Magnum. This model is an Argo Magnum. She's an older style. So, yeah. All right, guys, let's crack on here. I'm going to put you guys on the stand. I'm going to start just separating her. And we will crack on from here see what trouble we get into so if you recall on the channel i actually um had this argo separated before i just got nuts and bolts in her 
square top heads. Um, I think they're like 10 mil or 8 mil on the bottom. And I got her all epoxied. So it's not going to take too long and she'll be separated again. So I'll put you guys on a little time lapse and we'll crack on with her. So you can see I just got these nuts square top and um, just 10 mil on the bottom. I don't really, these lights are not bad. I think I'm going to actually upgrade to some flush mount LEDs. It'll be a nice little upgrade. Just put them all in the copter. Um, there's something like 50 odd, maybe 56 different bolts throughout this whole machine. I think it's around 56 roughly, Last time, if I remember from last time I had this apart. Anyways guys, I'm just going to crack on, uh, when I get all the bolts scanned, I'll come back and update you guys. I I'm just got to remove all these bolts and then we're going to separate the tub up and out of there. Okay guys, this took me a little bit of time, I just kind of slowly poking at it. I had to um, take the sealant, which you can see on the ground there. I had to take the sealant off each bolt essentially, what I had done, and I have them all removed. So as you can see, she's kind of ready to go. Get the gas tank cover off. Um, the only thing I have to do here now, I'm gonna take this out of the way, because you can see that's kind of connected and it's bolted down here. And I'm gonna let go of my bilge pump switches. Other than that, we're pretty much almost ready. And I gotta disconnect the lights and then we're just gonna pull this up, get it out of the way and go from there. Not much to it really. The throttle and all that stuff, that should be able to stay right in there, don't have to worry about that. Same with the transmission, because the tub is going to come right up off. So I'll get this ready to pull, and then I'll put you guys in the stand, and we'll pull this bad girl. Okay, so I've got the two switches taken out that I normally has for my bilge pumps. They're going to be mounted in a nice location in the future. Anyways, i got the, the light harness unplugged, just two wires. You can see we have our blower fan for the brake cooling. Two wires let go there, and then just let go um, my ignition switches, which you see in right here. And then that's it. We're gonna haul her apart. Hey guys, we are back to a rolling bathtub. <laughs> so, you can see she's pretty dirty. Um, I might actually wash this, get her all clean again. Might even bedline the pans down there. Top's got some nice rigidity in it. For like an old top is actually pretty rigid still. Which is nice. The one the Argo I just scrapped recently was really floppy. You can tell like the sides are really wore down. This one has a nice bit of rigidity. But I might add to it anyways. And make her a little bit more stronger. As far as the seat goes, you can see it's kind of a old design that's outdated is literally just a piece of angle and that's your main support this seat here as i was saying earlier does not flip up nothing like that so this is going to be all changed around get the hey guys um we're continuing on with the build here another beautiful foggy old day out there um as you can see last day i got the winch mount on it's just four bolts it is bolted down to the frame itself and today i like to actually try to tackle my um, tub support and bracing system so you can kind of see how it's going to go i'm got it ran along the frame this is three quarter square tubing by 1 16th thickness it's not very heavy and it's relatively strong because it is structural steel so i'm going to try to bend it i have a princess auto 2 bender over in the corner i'm going to see if i can bend it i've never actually used that <laughs> bender yet so we'll see if we can match the tub and then eventually i'll match it over here i think i'd like to have it terminated into this somehow maybe just bolt it on maybe a u-bolt but if i can have it supported off that it'd be nice kind of bring all the tub together and have her nice and um thickened up or supported reinforced all right so i'm gonna grab a piece of this and we'll i guess i'll put you guys on the stand we can see we'll have a look see if we can bend this metal and go from there 
Well, I'm slowly getting it. I, I might build a weld and all this stuff, but uh, I'm not that good with this pipe bender. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to crack on, slowly get it, and I'll show you guys what I end up with eventually. And then we'll uh, get that kind of mocked onto the Argo. Hey guys, beautiful day out here today. Just going to give you guys a little update. This is basically what my bars turned out to look like. Um, you can see the paint is just curing. It's extremely hot out today, um, which is nice. We're finally getting a bit of summer weather. But um, I had a lot of trouble getting this to line up exactly how I wanted it. So I cut the bars in some places and just re-welded it. And then I drilled the holes. And now I got the paint on her. So I do like it. Um, as you can see, the fenders are sagging here now. I'll do a comparison because I'm going to put the bolts back in it. Let's see here. You can kind of see how she sits without my little fender support. I'm going to put the bolts back up through it, and uh, i got rubber washers, some caulking, like silicone, and um, we'll get her all nice and structured, get this all done, and then, then essentially we can work on the seat and to do the flip seat conversion. This is the sag on the right hand side. Drop you guys down. Okay guys, so this is my anti-sag system. I got her blocked. All the bolts are blocked with silicone. They got rubber washers, all that good stuff. And um, you can see, it certainly helps a lot in terms of the sag. I got to clean up a lot of this stuff. You can see all the excess hanging down, like excess um, silicone, 100% waterproof stuff. But she has a lot more rigidity now. You can see, you can move the whole thing. I like it. Pretty cool, eh? So aside from needing to clean it up and letting it cure, um, it should be good in terms of my little um, homemade anti-sag bars. So the next thing to tackle here now is my seat. I think I'm going to cut the seat bracket out of um, my trailer, my tub trailer. I scrapped an Argo, like I was saying before in a previous video, I'm not sure if it was on this one, but um, I tried to get 800 bucks for a full machine, couldn't get it, so I decided to scrap it because the spare parts comes in handy. But anyways, I'll show you my future trailer. This is what I'm going to be taking the seat out of. I'm going to cut this bracket out, weld that into mine, bolt it, possibly bolt it in. We'll see how it's in there. But this is going to be my flip seat brackets. We use that. A lot of good parts in this whole thing though, but this is going to be a trailer, a uh, floating trailer eventually. It's going to be another project. Yeah, just going to show you guys that before it goes ahead. I'm going to cut this out here now, and um, this is going to be my flip seat. This is where the gas tank normally sits. The brackets are going to be up here. Nice and easy. Rather reuse it, because I won't need this for anything. If it goes to use this as a trailer, I'll uh, build some supports, put some plywood or something in here. And that'll just be in the way. Okay, so I got my seat bracket is in place here. I just got to line it up the best I can. Um, I'm going to tack it around, like on the outside perimeter, on each leg. And then also attach it to this bar as well. And then that won't go anywhere. So it'll be nice and easy. And uh, we'll have this main seat bracket in place. I'm going to go fit the empty gas tank in place after it's tacked in place. Make sure everything fits nicely. And then that's it. Nice and easy. We'll have the seat uh, conversion done, which is going to be a lot more comfy. And um, definitely prevent the flex on the tub. Because you can feel it when you're sitting on it and the tub is flexing. Alright, I'm going to go get the welder all set up here. Put a few tacks on this. Line her up. And then that's it. Okay hey guys, you can see I got the seat conversion setup is in here. I have um, the seat frame mount that are bolted on, welded on over here just to keep it in place. I couldn't do really nice welds because I'm trying not to burn the tub up. It's plastic. But um, that's not going anywhere. Down below is welded on really good. And she's bolted on with four bolts here. She's also bolted to the main cross member. So it's pretty sturdy. But you can see this is literally where the weight is going to rest. It's on the frame now, as opposed to the way it was factory on this 84 model. So I think next I'm going to tackle the fuel pump. 
swap the fuel pump under this girl and um, just do that because the top is out of the way which makes it a bit easy and then aside from that I'm gonna probably throw the top on tomorrow and um, what I'm gonna do with the tank now shortly I'm gonna strap it into the frame it doesn't really need it but it'll just help keep it in place Now guys, um, this is where the fuel pump is actually to on this unit. I just um, took the four bolts out as you've seen on the little time, clap, time lapse there for the intake manifold and just shimmy things out of the way. So this is actually held in place with two little screws up underneath facing in. If you're trying to do a fuel pump swap, I have a separate video um, just on how to change a fuel pump in an Argo. They're basically all the same. With these ones they're kind of a annoyance to replace but not hard once you're in here you can see down there a little starter motor gear but yeah i'm going to take off this clamp there and then we're going to get the two screws and uh pop this out of place here now in a second so this is a real fun job guys <laughs> you can see the little fuel pump here just dangling i go this is how i gets it out i use a ratchet uh big large phillips that's the type of little screw that's in it but uh just be careful you might want to plug this up with like rags if you got this off put a few rags down below so you don't drop any screws you don't want to drop anything down here into your cylinder head so just be very careful i'm just taking my time and slowly wiggling it out i got one more screw to go and then i'll get this pump out of the way as you can see, doing a fuel pump on one of these is a quite dirty job. Greasy, grimy. There's the, the spot that the little screws sit. You can see the corresponding flange. You can see the old one compared with the new ones, basically the same thing. Uh, we have to put the proper fittings on. So you can see the side with this piece has a 90 facing sideways. So one of those jobbies and a straight piece on the other end, which will be a straight piece. In order to uh, put these on properly, you kind of got to squeeze the sides. I use this like two screwdrivers and uh, pops it in place. If you try to force it, you'll knock that O-ring off. You see that little O-ring and you'll have fuel leaking and you don't want that. So do it right the first time. Hey guys, also I just wanted to note, if you're going to buy one of these fuel pumps, make sure you get an OEM quality, like a Kohler one, or like a genuine part. I ordered this one off Amazon, and it worked for one day. <laughs> also, on the Argo I replaced one on before, um, that pump only worked for a couple times and failed, so now I have a new one on the way. You'll see that at the end of the video, I've actually had to hook up an electric pump temporarily, but make sure you get an OEM one just so you can save yourself the hassle. Okay guys, I think we're ready for the top. I got the, the fuel line ran. The fuel pump is on. I managed to mount the bilge pump down right here. I used to have one back here and one over on that side. Now I got that one and then this one shifted forward. So they'll run that out, so that's great. Might have to get an extra piece, I don't think it's long enough. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But yeah, um, I touched up the floors and stuff, and a little bit of paint down there. You can see she's starting to look pretty good. The, um, the seat, or the gas tank, is strapped in place. It's not going to go anywhere anyways, but it is strapped in tight now. So yeah, I think we are ready for the top, because this is all done. Okay guys, it is a very hot day out. I got the tub basically back on, got the backrest off because I'm going to be raising it up and um, have the, fl the flip seat here now shortly. I'm going to use the one off the Argo while I scrapped. It's the new battery for the old girl, 51R. Um, that seems to be a nice fit because if you look down there, the positive is um, over on this side. The ground is traditionally on that side, the left side. 
So I'm going to go with this 51R. 51 would work as well because it just means the post would be right here and right here. But nice fit for sure. Let's throw it in and see what it's used like. Okay guys, we're back in the future again. You can see I got the, this black covering on the Argo. Um, I just went to start this to kind of clean the garage and like pull it outside and stuff. And guess what? That little Chinese cheap Amazon fuel pump failed. <laughs> Um, you see the fuel right here? Look, this is normally supposed to be into the curb. I'll show you this because I'm really disappointed with it. Not one ounce of fuel coming out of it. So I have to try to order a new fuel pump for this Argo. In the meantime, I do have an electric pump over there on the shelf. I'm going to wire that in just so I can move the vehicle back and forth. But now I can crack on anyways and uh, do a bit of work. I just need to get her up and running again with an electric fuel pump. But rather sad, a eh? brand new fuel pump. Gone a day later. I'll take it apart, inspect it, all that stuff. Might be dirt down in it or it might just be low quality. Sometimes the Amazon stuff like carbs and pumps and some of it's hit and miss depending on... Like, I guess a lot of it's made in China, some of it's lower quality, but a lot of it can be hit or miss. Alright guys, stay tuned for the next video. We'll uh, get this all up and running again. Get that windshield on, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys again soon.